Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the VSIM Academy. My name is Rob Waters, and I'm an Academy instructor located in Waterloo, Ontario. And today, uh, I want to thank you for joining us, and we're going to learn about the Vito Crossel 300 CU3A floor standing boiler. So uh, sit back uh, and enjoy the next hour. Uh, we do uh, appreciate your feedback. So after the webinar is over, you can feedback the information to us, but also as the webinar is ongoing, you can input information into the little uh, go to webinar uh, interface box on the left on your computer screen. So, so the Vito Crossel 300 is a brand new addition to the Wiesman product offering, and it was officially launched in uh, the, the spring of this year, 2015. And it introduces a new product to the residential portfolio, a floor standing high mass gas fired condensing boiler. And it's really the first new floor standing boiler that Wiesman's introduced into the marketplace in over 10 years. And we think it's a, it's, it's a fantastic product for a lot of applications and there's a huge potential for this product out there. And Wiesman has a long history of, of high mass boilers. And I'll explain to you later on as we go through the, the uh, webinar here, why we think that's really important and the advantages of a high mass design. If you look at some of the features of that boiler, first off, it's, it's a floor standing boiler. It's not a wall hung boiler like most of our other residential gas fired condensing boilers. And, it, and it's, and it opens up uh, some, some unique opportunities. So it is a floor standing boiler. First and foremost, it differentiates this from other products is the fact that it's a high water volume, high mass construction. And that has a huge amount of benefits, which I'll uh, elaborate on as we go through the presentation today. But um, it's really what separates it from our, for instance, our Vito Dems wall mounted boilers in the construction and water volume and mass in, in that heat exchanger. One of the huge side benefits of, of high mass, high water volume design is low friction loss in the heat exchanger itself. And that really changes the way we can, we can use the spoiler. Uh, it opens up different hydraulic piping configurations. It reduces the amount of uh, pumping power you need to use and it eliminates uh, uh, devices like mass tanks and things like that. So, so we'll talk about that as we move along. But uh, the friction loss through this is dramatically different than a wall-mounted uh, Vito Den series of boilers. Another unique feature that, that sets this apart from the wall-mounted series of boilers is the temperature range of this boiler, up to 90 Celsius, 194 Fahrenheit. You know, quite a bit higher than our wall-mounted series. And again, opens this up to... Uh, some applications we weren't able to tap into before, which, you know, is the, uh, the uh, retrofit market for high temperature fin radiators, which need that kind of high temperature or other applications that require high temperatures. So, so that's a great new feature. Uh, it's a, like, like all of our products, uh, tremendously efficient, high performance machine, AFUE 95%, and that all translates into uh, to a huge reduction in fuel savings. And especially if you retrofit in the, into a, a situation where you're replacing an old floor standing copper or cast iron boiler, you're gonna see dramatic reduction in fuel consumption for your customers. It's really simple to ease, install and service. Everything's laid out in such a way, and you'll see as we go through this, that it's easy to access components. It's easy to pipe things up. It's, it's laid out in a very logical manner. You're not going to have to be a contortionist to get in there and service parts. It's all laid out right in front of you. So it's really a serviceman's dream. A lot of the recent introduction of new wall, uh, boilers that have flooded into the market in the last five to ten years, a lot of them are compact, really elaborate, uh, very difficult to service and get into there. Not the case with this boiler. Uh, and it is a fairly compact design. It's it's design as compact footprint. It's much bigger than a wall mounted boiler, but the footprint is actually going to be smaller than a lot of the boilers that it's replacing. And certainly gives you a modern, clean appearance uh, compared to some of the old clunkers with wires and cables and pipes and everything. From the front end, it's very clean. There's no piping on the sides. 
uh, top or back, or I'm sorry, everything's at the back. So it, it, you can really make a nice, clean, neat, modern mechanical room retrofit. Uh, some other features uh, starts out with the heat exchanger. And there's a lot of great features with that heat exchanger design. And we'll go through that a little bit more detail as we go through the presentation, but it's a, it, it's a high grade stainless steel. It's got a self cleaning action, which is gonna make it very service friendly. And there's a sludge and, and, and sediment section at the bottom end of that heat exchanger, which makes this a uh, very resilient boiler and resistant to some of the problems you can get in, in a retrofit. The burner. We, uh, what's old is new again. Uh, Wiesman returns back to the Matrix Dome Burner. The first generation of Vitodens we launched in, in the year 2000 incorporated the Radiant Dome Burner. And we got away from that with our Vitodens 200 and 100 series, went to a cylinder burner, but Wiesman never stopped using this in Europe. So we're returning with this again. Uh, it's a fantastic burner that the, the, the round dome shape gives you a lot of advantages from a standpoint of radiant surfaces and, and how it radiates energy to the heat exchanger. So it's a great, great burner technology. Really high turn down ratio, five to one and, and, and extremely low emissions, all part and parcel with how that burner operates. Great features there. And then the uh, Lambda Pro combustion technology and high altitude operation are, are great features of combustion and burner control system. And we'll elaborate on that further on. And, and uh, those are, are, are proven features we've offered in our VitoDens 200 series for, for quite a few years now. And it's, it's proven to be a real winner. A uh, couple other features here, uh, control. Uh, we incorporate all the Wiesman system technology that we've developed over the last 25 years. And it comes in a slightly different package, but it's the same interface and the same functionality you're used to in other boilers. So uh, it's not a new, it's no learning curve here. It's just a new way of, of packaging it into that top console control. And it comes internet ready with different modules you can buy to, to get into either BMS communication or, or, or residential internet connectivity. Comes fully assembled, so uh, it comes out of the box ready to go. And there's a full line of accessories that are available with that, like domestic water storage tanks, mixing valves, actuators. So you can make the whole system approach now. And we've also now introduced in Canada the fan coil units. So you can make a full Wiesman package system. So let's talk about benefits. With every feature, there's a benefit. The benefit is the thing that the customer says, well, what's in it for me? It's great to say you got this fancy stainless steel heat exchanger and the Zynax, uh, you know, the, the radiant burner. Well, customer says, well, what does it mean to me? So you always have to attach a benefit to a feature. And uh, we've tried to summarize some of the, the great benefits that you can give to your customers with this product. Certainly reliability and long service life is, is a great thing you can promote with this. With the high mass design, high water volume design, it reduces the friction loss and such. Low fuel consumption is certainly another great feature. It's gonna knock the socks off their fuel bills. And uh, you, you have a application of, of, of wide ranges here with retrofits, new constructions, high temperature, low temperature, radiant floor, you name it, because it's a condensing boiler and because it has high temperature capabilities, it really can be used just about anywhere. The high mass, high water volume design makes this a perfect boiler for multi-zone systems with micro loads. We're seeing more and more and more of this all the time now, as you get small little micro loads, which can drive low mass boilers absolutely bonkers because they cycle themselves on and off, on and off as all these micro loads come on and off. So more and more people are, are going uh, gangbusters with multiple zones, which is, which is great because that's one of the great benefits that hydronic heating has to offer over other types of heating like forced air and but the boiler has to be able to handle this so this is the perfect match for that reduce cycling certainly reduces wear and tear and that ties into that first point reliable long service life why can we claim that it has a lot to do with the the fact that we reduce the burner cycling hydraulically the high mass design eliminates the needs for boiler pumps, mass tanks, primary, secondary piping. So I'll elaborate on that further on. And certainly easy to service and maintain. So overall, a ton of great benefits and features there that you can offer your customer on this product. So let's dive in a little deeper and, and have a look at some of the uh, of these features in detail. Vito Crossel is new to North America, but it's certainly not new to Wiesman. 
we've been making this boiler uh, in a couple of different variations for the last 19 years. And it's been a very successful boiler in, in Europe, uh, it, this, this floor mounted design. And the latest, this latest version, the CU3A, has really taken off in Europe over the last uh, uh, five years or so. And uh, we have big expectations for here in North America. So you're not getting something new. It's proven and reliable design from Europe. Those are the four of sizes available. They're all full modulation burner technology. So we show you there the range of operation, the minimum and the maximum firing rate. The largest capacity, 199,000. The lowest firing rate, 19,000. So you got a wide range of operating capability there. And you can go multi-boiler with this with a cascade control. And we can get up to almost 1.6 million BTUs with four of these Vito Cross L300s uh, uh, in, in a bank. So it gets us into uh, small to medium sized commercial applications. And again, it's a, per a perfect match for, for a lot of commercial buildings that, that, ha that require more than one, one boiler, you know, small apartment buildings, churches, uh, community centers, anything with the old cast iron radiators in there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, community buildings, uh, uh, municipal offices and things like that. This would be a perfect match for that kind of kind of scenario. So, with all the talk about high mass, high water content, uh, it's a, it's really the heart of what this this boiler is all about. When you look at the construction of that heat exchanger, but you know why is it important? Why why are why am I spending all this verbiage to tell you about why what what this design is all about and and, and really how does it impact the boiler's operation? Because you need to be able to translate that information to your customer to really show them why what the benefits of this and it's really what this boiler is all about so if we look backwards a little bit uh, i've been with Viesman for 20 years now and i've been talking about high mass high water volume boilers is since i started here we have a long history with uh, the atola rn series uh, the tola series Vito, and in current boilers we sell commercially the Vito cross 200 and the Vito cross 300 Beastman has always believed in high mass, high water volume design as a way to produce reliable, long lasting heat exchangers and to reduce the stress of burner cycling and, and, the, and the amount of thermal loading you have on the heat transfer surfaces. So uh, we always talk about our, our heat exchangers not being thermally overloaded and that has a lot to do with cycling and the amount of heat transfer surface area you have inside that vessel. This is a slide I took out from one of my presentations from you know 15 years ago and we really talked about the benefits of mass and water volume back then with uh, you talking about higher seasonal fuel efficiencies when you reduce the cycling you reproduce better efficiencies it's like a car if you reduce the city mileage the on off stop and go you get better mileage less wear and tear on the components and lower emissions so th th those are features that we've talked about for a long time and if you look at the cu3a it really is a, a true high mass high water content boiler the, the mass of the boiler there, 270 to 350 pounds, that's with, uh, without water in it. And then you add anywhere from 14 to 18 and a half gallons of water, and you got a really a lot of mass and water volume. So you get a flywheel effect with the mass and water volume. It takes a longer time to heat it up, takes a longer time for it to cool down. So the burner can run for, a, uh, it's got a certain differential when it fires. So it's going to drive that, come on, it's going to run for a long period of time. And then it's going to shut off and it takes a long time to draw the heat off that all that mass and water volume. You combine that with a modulation burner with a five to one turndown ratio. And it's going to be very, very, very difficult to make this boiler short cycle. You really have to work at it. You have to have a really severely messed up hydronic system to have this uh, boiler short cycling. Because if it, it, with all that mass, all that water volume, all that modulation capability, you combine that with outdoor reset control technology, this thing should not short cycle. That just means you just extend the life of the heat exchanger, a lot less stress on the heat exchanger. You look at the surface area of heat transfer surface and all those cross press stainless steel plates. Compare that to other boilers, you'll see a big difference. That's one of the reasons why you pay more for a Viesman product. You're paying for all that heat exchanger, which gives you the benefit. If you sell, uh, if the boilers were priced per pound, you'd see that there's a lot of value in this Vito Crosso boiler because you compare it to other boilers that are less money, but Compare the weight and water volume and the mass and how much heat, heat exchanger area is and then you'll see a big difference. All that mass and water content means large internal passageways surrounded by lots of water. And that 
translates into low boiler pressure loss. 0 0.6 to 1.6 feet of head is the friction loss through that boiler at 20 degree delta T. It's almost negligible. You can almost disregard the friction loss through the heat exchanger when you're sizing your pump because it's, it's, it's so negligible. So that just means that you, you can change the way you pipe and, and, and hydraulically connect this boiler to your system. And I'll show you that in a minute. It's really the same mentality we use in our same design philosophy as our commercial series boilers, the uh, Vito Crosso CT3 and the, and the CM2s use the same high mass high water volume boiler. The sludge and debris settlement area we're talking about here is right at the bottom of the boiler where your water pipe comes out. There's a little bit of area, two or three inch, a couple inches below the level where the water comes out, where any sludge debris sediment that makes its way back into the boiler is going to settle out at the bottom there. It's the farthest point away from the burner where the hot zone is. So you don't ever produce any stress from fouled up heat exchangers. And again, it's one of the biggest causes of failure in a low mass boiler. If you get any sort of sedimentation inside the boiler, and then that becomes, you know, you get 1600 degrees Fahrenheit from the burner, it just cooks the heat exchanger. Not gonna happen here. So what are the benefits? Again, those are great features, but what are the benefits? Low thermal stress, less stress in the boiler. That, that just translates to longer burner lifespan. Uh, dramatically reduced short cycling. And like, as I said, it's almost, it's it's very hard to imagine a scenario where this, this thing short cycles. Excessive turndown rates are not required to control cycling. A lot of boiler manufacturers are promoting these really high 20 to one turndown rates and all this kind of elaborate stuff, 10 to one turndown. Well, it's because the mass can't handle that. You know, that we don't need to have, we have a good turndown rate on this, but we don't need that to control the cycling. This is a better design and a better ma uh, for mismatched systems and microload systems. So you get a, a system with lots of multiple zones and loads, and you're, you're not going to find a better boiler for that. So because of that, all, all the mass and water volume, it, it translates into a couple benefits for hy hydraulically. And no minimum flow rates, no dedicated boiler pump required, no low loss header or primary secondary required, and no high head system pumps required, no mass tank required. So, so really hydraulically different approach to to a heating system we've all the whole industry's had to learn over the last 10 15 years how to pipe up condensing low mass condensing boilers and so we've all had to learn about low mass headers and primary secondary and mass tanks and all you know you read all these seek and tell articles about how to pipe in a mass tank to a, well that's all because we had these low small heat exchangers that are overloaded so we take all that out of the equation now with with the high mass high water volume design and as i mentioned earlier not sensitive to sediment and and the durability reliable so that's the biggest benefit to me overall this thing's built to last and it's not gonna suffer premature you know it's almost like i wouldn't say it's bulletproof but it's it's a lot harder to make this boiler uh ex experience stress and believe me we sell a lot of wall mounted boilers here at Viesman, and we see a lot of even our own boilers that are put through a lot of stress and have premature uh, short lifespans because of the way they're piped, the way they're controlled, the hydraulics, the, you know, the way people have connected them up. This, this boiler is a lot more forgiving. And uh, so it, it's going to be a great product for, for providing lifespan. If you compare this boiler to others on the market, you can see the difference. And you look at the mass, the weight, the water content, and the pressure loss on a Vito Crosso 300. And you look at, uh, it's a typical low mass boiler less than half the weight, you know, a minuscule amount of water content in those low mass boilers and huge pressure loss through the heat exchanger. So that really changes the dynamics of the piece of equipment. And you look at that, you know, the comparison, uh, you know, more mass, more water content, le longer run times, uh, less thermal loading, lower pressure drop, uh, simpler installations, better durability. It's starting to sound like a, a bit of a broken record, but that's really, that's, that's the, that's the feature of this boiler that really sets it apart. If you look at a typical low mass boiler and how you connect it into a, a hydronic system, this is typically what the market is and the industry is doing now is we, we put in those closely spaced T's or a low loss header. We have a strainer because we've got to keep crap out of that boiler or you just destroy it. You got a couple of high head pumps for your, your space heating and your domestic water heating because you got all that friction loss you got to overcome. And so you look at all those components and say, well, those all cost money, right? Those all require that you spend more money on pumps, you spend more money on low loss headers, you have to spend more labor on piping this all up. 
And you got to be concerned with that gunk getting back into the boiler because uh, it'll just kill it. So, you know, you got to think, is there a better way of doing this? And, you know, you look at the Vito Crossel 300. There you go. Directly connected. No primary, secondary, no low loss header, no boiler pumps on the boiler loop. And none of the pumps have to be high head pumps to overcome. You may need it for the system, but you don't need it for the boiler. You don't have to have a high head pump to overcome the friction loss in that boiler. So really changes the dynamics. And you look at the cost of a Vito Crossel 300, you have to consider, I don't need all those other things. You buy a, a traditional Walmart boiler, you spend extra money on a high head pump or two high head pumps. That's an extra three or four or $500. You spend extra money for the low loss header or you the extra labor to pipe it all up. You, you got to have a huge you know, Y strainer in there to protect the boiler. This is a lot of value in this boiler. So let's take a closer look at the internal components of this of this product. There's a cutaway picture of a Vito Crossel 300. It starts. I will start at the top here with the digital control on the top of the boiler, and all the wiring connections are in the top panel there. Um, you look at the uh, matrix dome burner there, firing into the combustion chamber. So this is the main water-backed combustion chamber here. And if you look at this section in the back and the top, that's all water jackets in there so there's a huge amount of water that surrounds the combustion chamber and then there's water jackets all down through here and through all the wafer sections so that's the inox crossel stainless steel heat exchanger section in there so huge amount of mass and water volume that surrounds all those heat transfer surfaces so they cool down very rapidly they, they you get into the condensing mode very rapidly with this boiler when you have low water temperatures connected to it the flue gas collector and the condensate drain is at the very bottom of that unit. Very serviceable from the front. You can get at this thing, pull it apart as required. Your flue gases exit out the back here. We put lots of insulation around that vessel because, you know, you get all that mass and water volume, you want to keep the heat inside the vessel. So even when this thing shuts down for a period of time, it, it might take three or four or five hours for this boiler even to drop two or three degrees. So it, it's very good at keeping the heat inside the combustion chamber. The Inox Crossel heat exchanger is not new for Wiesman. We, we've been using this for 25 years now. So again, we're not introducing some newfangled design here. This is something that's tried and true uh, by Wiesman for the last 25 years. And you look at the, uh, this is the construction line in, in, in the factory in, in Germany. It's a lot of it's robotics and laser welding now. So it's very precise welding seams on, on those cross press designs. So the, the burner fires into that water-backed, water-cooled combustion chamber. Each pocket of the uh, heat exchanger is approximately 30,000 BTUs of input. So there's very low thermal stress on that. It's very easily accessible as well because you, when you open up the combustion chamber door and take the burner off, you have a full access to that combustion chamber. So if you need to wash it out with a, with a pressure washer or, or anything, you can wash it all down and it flows out the back. This is how that cross press design worked. You have a very intensive flow of hot flue gases and you get turbulent flow through that heat exchanger as it's passing through those cross press designs. So the flue gas is twisting and turning as it goes through there and that produces excellent heat transfer characteristics. The flue gases and the, and the condensate are flowing in the same direction. So the flue gases are coming in the top and the hot flue gas is starting up here and the condensate is, is flowing down that same direction. So that's where you get that self-cleaning effect. The condensation occurs on the inside of the pockets here and it flows down and, and flows out the bottom of that boiler. You have a counterflow of hot flue gases and cold return water. So the cold return water comes in the bottom and flows up and out the top. The flue gases are coming in from the top and out the bottom. So that's uh, any heat exchanger design. You want to have that counter flow approach of flue gases of your two streams of fluid. So we get latent heat and sensible heat being extracted in that heat exchanger. And the sensible heat uh, is, is basically the burner flame itself. The latent heat is the condensate, which condenses in the heat exchanger and produces that self-cleaning action as it flows through the heat exchanger. And again, that basic design we've used in the Vito Cross, it used to be the Vertimat series commercial boiler, then it turned into the Vito Crossel 300 CT3 series commercial series. 
same basic design in our CM2 series, commercial, beetle crossal, and now in this residential version, CU3A. Great heat exchanger design, very, very reliable. The Matrix Dome Burner, again, manufactured by Wiesman for the last uh, over 15 years. Uh, it's, it's a stainless steel screen on that dome, and it relies a lot on radiant energy transfer from that dome. The blue flame you see on the top is, is only at light off. When it lights off, there's a puff of blue flame, and then it sort of settles back down and, and starts to glow a bright orangey red color, and I'll show you a video of that in a few minutes. So again, this is a display from our factory in Germany. You can see we make, Wiesman developed this burner themselves and we make a couple versions. There's the cylinder series and there's the dome series. And the cylinder series is used in all of our wall mounted condensing boulders now. And you can see even these big boys here are used now in our CM2 series, commercial Vito Crossel 200 series boilers. The dome burner is now what we're using in this uh, in CU3A. And again, it's been around a long time and it's proven to be very, very durable and reliable. So on the right-hand side of the screen there, you should see a little video running and, and depending on your uh, internet speed, it may be uh, jumpy or not, but that is a, a shows the light off and the, uh, the way that burner operates. After, you can see after it starts to uh, run for a while, the blue flame kind of disappears and it just starts to glow the whole screen starts to glow and radiate energy. And that's why you get very, very low NO expert emissions and uh, excellent heat transfer in all directions. Uh, it's, it's very durable, that dome shape, and there's a light off again, you can see and the, the light, the spark ignition system on the side. By the way, don't try this at home. You, this is, <laughs> this is a, a laboratory test showing that burner lighting off. It's a five to one uh, turn down ratio, natural gas or LP gas, and it uses that Lambda Pro combustion technology. So uh, a gr great, great burner technology. Easy to service, easy to maintain as well. You can take that out and clean it and service it. Does, it it's really easy to burner to work on. Lambda Pro technology is something we introduced in the uh, about seven or eight years ago with the uh, Vito Dense 200 series. And I don't wanna get into too much detail here, but basically what it is, is it's a peace of mind for the installer and it, and it really simplifies the installer from the combustion side of things. Uh, it automatically adjusts to varying conditions. It automatically adjusts to LP or natural gas with just a coating address uh, and it's self calibrating. So every time that burner starts up, <clears throat> it goes through a self calibration check and will always try to maintain uh, perfect combustion. Even if things change, if the gas quality changes, if the gas supply changes, if the air quality or the air supply changes, it's always trying to operate at about a 1.3 XS air ratio. So when it starts up, it'll go through a calibration check and it looks where it is and it makes sure that the excess air is right. It does this by looking at the ionization signal and it reads the signal off the flame rod. Uh, and we always want to be operating in about a 1.2 to 1.3 range of excess air. That's what gives us our best combustion. That's what we call lean combustion. That's good. Rich combustion, not enough air, uh, lambda on the X, uh, not enough excess air. You actually get very bad combustion, sooting, things like that. So this little video here shows how this works. We independently control the gas and air, and we're monitoring the ionization signal all the time. So that ionization signal feeds back into the control and the control says, I need to, I'm either burning too lean or I'm burning too rich. And it automatically compensates and adjusts the gas valve accordingly. So that little video just shows what happens. And you can see up on that left hand side here, the ionization signal in relationship to the excess air. So it's always trying to operate in this green zone here, always trying to operate in there and it's gonna adjust itself automatically based on that flame signal. And this is happening in real time. It's not, it doesn't happen as slow as you see here. It's, it's instantaneous, real time adjustment. Even when that flame rod starts to get fouled up over time, it will compensate for that. It realizes the, the technology is sophisticated enough 
that will keep putting us in that excess air ratio that we want to see. So it's almost impossible to have bad combustion with this boiler. And it ensure, what it means for the end user is that uh, basically the benefit is, is to the end user there, constant, high efficiency, safe, comfortable, uh, efficient performance all the time. And uh, to the installer, it's, it's a simple, easy commissioning and easy adjustment uh, or switchover from natural gas or LP gas. Uh, so it really is a, a great technology and it's proven to be very reliable for us. So we use that now in, in three burner series there, the uh, Vito Den series and the Vito Crossel. And it, it, it's, it's definitely something that is gonna become more and more important over time as well. There's changes in the gas supply structure happening and that, that is causing a lot of fluctuating gas quality. Fracked, fracking shale glass, liquid nat, nat, uh, liquefied natural gas being pumped into the system, biogas being introduced in the system. These all have uh, minute changes to the calorific value and the, and, the, and, the, and the quality of the gas. So you don't need to worry about that. We worry about that. The Lambda Pro technology worries about that. So it's, it's really a great technology. And there is more information on that available. If you're interested, that we have a full flyer on our website. You can download and, and explain how that Lambda Pro works. And, and uh, it, it's great technology for, for all of our condensing boiler series. Uh, same story here for venting as we have with our Vito Den series of boilers. It's the same options. It's just a little different connection on the boiler itself. You can see on the back of the boiler there, you've got your vent connections. You've got two separate vent connections side by side here. So that allows us a lot of flexibility in material and, and whether you use single wall, double wall, uh, et cetera. Uh, so we're approved for coaxial PPS or single wall PPS, uh, rigid PPS, CPVC and stainless steel. And lots of vending options, depending on what works best for you. There's a whole detailed venting manual available on this product. It's something like 60 pages. And you, you have all of these different options explained in details. And, and it explains the um, equivalent length that's available for each one of these options. So if you go two pipe systems, uh, there's really three options there. There's the uh, either you know, straight out through the sidewall uh, straight up through the top, or you can go hybrid. And um, you, with hybrid, opens up a lot of possibilities there with, you know, bringing the vent up through an old chimney, but then bringing the combustion air in through the side. So all of these are sealed combustion with uh, combustion air being brought right into the appliance. You do have the option to use room air for combustion and have a single pipe running out through the side or vertical. And that gives you the longest possible equivalent length of venting. Up close to, I think it's 198 feet, you can run equivalent length there. So that gives you your longest possibility. All of the other two pipe options, it's a combination of the supply and return pipe that has to be considered for your maximum equivalent length. And then my personal preference is the coax system where you use, a, it's a pipe within a pipe. And so you have one pipe, one opening through the, through the facade of the building, either roof or wall, and that brings in your combustion air and your and your exits your flue gas all in one piping system. So, lots of details available in our in our manuals on that. So, uh, if you need more information, refer to that that detailed venting manual. So, uh, moving on, the uh, control system is another great feature of this spoiler and. Again, we don't have time to get into huge amounts of details here, but it's the same basic control technology we use in our other boilers. It's a KW6B version, and it has a little bit different housing, but it's the same functions as you're used to on the on a Vito Dens 200 series boiler and uh, lots of other, other boilers. And this is the Wiesman control technology that incorporates all the functions you see on the side here. It's really a multi-function boiler and system controller. It doesn't just control the boiler, it controls the whole system. So this is the technology from us that goes right back to our Trimatic MC ver version we introduced 20 years ago. Control the boiler, use outdoor reset to save fuel, control the domestic water system, control mixing valves as required for <clears throat> multi-temperature systems. So it's, it's a multi-temperature space and domestic water control. One high temperature circuit and up to two low temperature circuits are possible with that, plus domestic hot water. And you now have, uh, you also have digital uh, clock in there to set back heating loads at different times of the day and night. So 
tons of capability to save fuel and optimize the way that system operates. And uh, if you program that, that control properly so that it, it has the right heating curve, use some night setback timers, use the outdoor reset control, and, and you have mixing valves to control the system, you're going to knock the heating consumption in that building down dramatically and yet still retain, maintain comfort. So that's what it's all about. That's what outdoor reset, when it's done right, it's more comfortable and it's more efficient. You should never have to sacrifice comfort to get efficiency. It, it just eliminates the waste that most traditional high temperature boilers are, are having. Uh, we also have some other neat things in this boiler. You've got integrated lawn module in there. So when you get into things like internet communication and BMS interface, it's all built in. And it's got a zero to 10 volt output for a variable speed pump. So you can control uh, an ECM motor on the system pump. We have some accessories that are available. We have a cascade control for multiple boilers and you have uh, lawn land modules for internet communication and, and BMS gateway communication. So that control is housed on top of the boiler. It's a flip top control. And there's two parts that flip off. The, the top part is the, uh, is the LCD screen. And then it's a little flap on the bottom here, which flips up to give you access to the on off switch and some of the, the fixed high limits and resets on there. The digital screen is the same as what we use on other, other boilers. We introduced this about two or three years ago. Very user friendly, easy to follow text, uh, sort of word driven display now. So you don't, you don't have to do as many codes and it, it's very intuitive uh, as, fall, as far as following through, you know, displays boiler temperature, outside temperature, status bar right in the top here. Uh, when it comes to programming, very easy to navigate with plain text and graphics. This is a screen here which shows the setback timers. So you can see it's right there on the screen. It's very easy to follow what, what your setback schedules are. If you want to get into some of the programming changes, it's right there on the screen and text. So it's not uh, difficult to figure out how to do that. And when you get into things like changing heating curves for the outdoor reset control, it shows you there right there on the screen. If I start changing the slope, you see that line move up and down uh, as you change the slope. So, and you can see right away, okay, it's zero degrees, 53 degrees Celsius. So that, right away you can see what the adjustment is that you're making. And so it makes it a lot easier for everyone to understand outdoor reset because we find a lot of contractors still struggle and homeowners and distributors struggle with outdoor reset and what it really means and what, and, and so this visualizes it to a point where it's much easier to understand what's going on. And if you want to get into internet connect, connection, we have that option with the VitoCom 100 LAN and gives you the option to connect to some apps that we have, uh, the VitoTroll app. So we actually will run a separate webinar on VitoCom communication. That's coming up in uh, September. So if you're interested in learning more about that, VitoCom internet connect, connection and how that works and how those apps work, uh, join us in September for, for that webinar as well. But that lawn module that's required to make that communication possible is built right into the standard control of, of the Vito Crosser. Uh, and accessories, these are things that are available in the Vespin world as well. Communication thermostats, the Vito Trolls, and you can get into mixing valves and actuators as well in those multi-temperature systems. So those are all standard accessories that have been available from Vespin for a while. So our transportation handling, there's a built-in um, back skid which because this boiler is a little heavier and, and larger than a wall mounted boiler, it takes a little bit more thought in how you're gonna move it around. So that back skid really makes it simple to move this thing around. So a fridge cart or our equipment cart strapped to that back skid, and then that back skid is bolted right into the frame of the boiler. So you can take it off the floor skid and then move it around and then put it in place and then take that back skid off. And there's some holes in the, uh, in the base of the frame that you can use to put a bar through or something like that if you wanna lift that thing up. It's fully assembled, no need to assemble it on site. You never have to remove the side or back panels for installation. Everything is accessible from the front or from the back. All the piping connections and venting connections are at the back and the air intake is also piped in from the pre-piped under the bottom of the boiler up into the burner. Electrical connections are through the top panel here. So you pop that top panel off and you can get it run. There's a wiring connection 
points all these openings here are for a wire to come in and also the uh, there's some wiring terminals on the front here where you can run wire through these little knockouts here and out, and out the back as well so very easy to work with there's all your connections on the back uh, starting with boiler supply at the top a b is the, is your boiler return c is your at the top is your safety header where your pressure relief valve and air vent go d is your gas connection e is your boiler drain again down at the bottom here and then you have your condensate drain at the very very bottom of the boiler and your vent connections on 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 the bottom here as well recommended service clearances there we show here you need to have uh, those are pretty straightforward nothing unusual there super easy to service the burner and you can see everything's laid out in the front there there's the front of the boiler with the panel off everything's exposed all the wiring connections the burner uh, the combustion air opening comes up here and you can hang the boiler on the door the burner on the door sorry so a couple of bolts come off you disconnect a couple of cables on there with quick connect plugs you got a lifting handle on the on the burner and you lift that thing off and hang and clunk it on the door and it's super easy now to service the heat exchanger and the burner all the electrodes are exposed all the heat exchangers exposed uh, everything's right there you got two hands you can work on this thing it's hanging on the door so again it's, it's a serviceman's dream here to work on this piece of equipment everything's easy to get at you're not crawling around the floor you're not worrying about how you're going to get at things if it comes time to clean the uh, condensate p-trap or or get into that condensate collector pan at the bottom again super easy to get at if all you need to do is clean the p-trap here this thing just unscrews it's a hand screw connection on this bottom bowl here you can clean the whole thing out or you can connect uh, disconnect it here and here and take the whole thing out and flush it out so in any condensing boiler the p-trap is often the thing that accumulates a lot of the dirt and debris and that's what you need to uh, clean out on a service call so this thing's super easy to get at So those are the main kind of nuts and bolts and, and, and pieces and parts of that boiler. I want to talk a little bit now about, you know, uh, where's the opportunity for this kind of floor standing boiler and where we, where we really see this boiler being used. And in our opinion, it's anywhere a non-condensing or condensing boiler could be used. And that's both residential and commercial, whether you're talking retrofits, new construction, low temperature applications like radiant floor and snow melting because that condensing technology high temperature applications radiators fan coils where you need to deliver those high temperatures and and have a reduced burner cycling uh, volume domestic water heating if you need to produce a lot of hot water uh, being able to produce 195 degrees fahrenheit is going to allow you to really crank out that domestic hot water multi-load systems multi-temperature systems multi-zone systems so you name it, this, this boiler is a, a good match, but there's some that really, really make sense. If you look at the market for floor standing gas fire condensing boilers in residential applications, and you can see that gas floor standing non-condensing boilers, this green section here, is a huge part of the market. And we believe that this is just gonna to continue to grow. This floor standing condensing boiler is gonna grow into this floor standing non-condensing market. And both Canada and the U.S., there's a huge potential for converting non-condensing to condensing technologies. As efficiency laws change, as people get more uh, in tune with, um, with retrofitting their equipment. So boiler retrofits, you know, atmospheric boiler replacements, cast iron boiler replacements, old V-spin boilers. You know, if you've got a customer with an old Vitola or an old Atola, v upgrade them to this boiler. Any system that's got cast iron radiators or, or high temperature fin tube radiators, great application. Old homes with converted gravity systems, old churches, municipal buildings, those high mass, high water volume, high water content systems really need a, a high water content boiler. Anything new, uh, radiant floor, snow melting, multi-zone, mismatch systems, the systems that have a low heating load and a high domestic load really super applications for this. So let's look at a couple of applications and, and look at the pros and cons. This is a very typical old home, fin radiators, old cast iron boiler in the basement. And you look at the, the advantage of that is it's you know economical, it's cheap and easy to install. People are familiar with how to pipe it and wire it and, and uh, it's suitable for those high temperature systems. The boiler's not sensitive to flow, so it's directly piped to the system. There's no need for the, all these fancy low-loss headers and such. So that's what a lot of people and that have been around hydronics for a long time are familiar with. 
But what are the disadvantages? Well, there's quite a few when you look at mostly has to do with fuel cost, you know, uh, high fuel consumption, no outdoor reset capability, single uh, set point on the boiler. It's not sealed combustion. You know, the boiler can't operate at low temperatures, so you, 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 you can't really take advantage of any uh, of that opportunity. So it's time to upgrade. We need a new modern heating boiler in this in this in this scenario, and we want something that's easy to install and easy to work with. One of the options would be to put in a condensing wall mounted boiler, or or take that boiler and mount it on the on a rack. So that certainly upgrades the efficiency, lower fuel costs. You get into modulation burner now. You get advanced control functions. You get you know multi temperature heating circuits, multiple venting options. It's now sealed combustion. So it's a great option to be able to upgrade that. But the disadvantages of, of that is that in a building that's got low basement heights or got a lot of requirements there to make that work in that old system, we got to use primary secondary, we got to use high head pumps, we're sensitive to flow rates, we may need a boiler stand if you can't hang it on the wall, additional components, installation time costs, higher electrical consumption with those high head pumps, you got an added extra pump in there, more wiring. So... Yes, it's a, it's a way of doing that, but in our opinion, the Vito Crossel is is really the way to go, because you look at all the advantages here; it gives you all those advantages, and really the only consideration is is the mass and water, getting it down in the basement. It's a little heavier and 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 larger, but all the benefits there: fuel consumption, no need for low loss headers, no primary secondary, lower electrical consumption. It fits into the same footprint. You got seal combustion. So it's really the ideal modern retrofit of an old system. Gives you all the benefits of, of today's latest technology, yet none of the none of the funky piping and wiring and all the changes. You can drop it into the same footprint that was there, and it really simplifies the whole process. And for those old school contractors that aren't used to this newfangled technology, this is something they're going to be comfortable with. It's got Two pipes in the back, you connect in the hot and the cold, and, and away you go. You pump into it, and, and it's not requiring any of these fancy uh, mass tanks and low-loss headers and all that kind of stuff. So the ideal modern retrofit heating boiler. Couldn't ask for a better product. You look at this target application here. Look at this old clunker here in the basement. You got a low chimney height. You got all these big high-mass piping in there with... You, know, you look at all this piping in here, you're probably feeding into cast iron radiators or something like that. You drop this boiler in that footprint there, you connect to those two pipes there, you connect your venting system in off the bottom of the boiler into that low chimney, run a flex liner up there and bingo. What what a great uh, retrofit for that kind of scenario. Because you look at, if I have to put a wall mounted boiler in there, I have, where am I going to put it? I have to put it on a, on a stand or I have to find a wall somewhere. I have to do primary secondary, you have to do some fancy piping changes and you know the CU3A is the way to go. Another application we talk about is is that mismatched load, low heating load, large domestic load. This is more and more of a rela reality today in new construction. Homes are getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And I got an example here of a ICF home where where the heating load is very low, but domestic water loads are not getting smaller. People are using more and more and more hot water. So you got this mismatch now. You got to, you need a very small amount of heat for heating, but you need a large amount of BTUs and uh, capabilities to produce domestic hot water. So if you put a low mass boiler in there, it's going to cycle like crazy whenever it's doing heating. And, uh, and it may not have the capability for domestic hot water. So this is the perfect match for that kind of scenario. There you go. The uh, the Vito Crossel 300 is really everything you need in a heating boiler. When you look at the the benefits and features that we've gone through here, you can see that uh, we have a lot to offer our customers. A product that's suitable for a wide range of applications, highly efficient condensing operate operation, so you're going to really have dramatic fuel savings, durability, reliability. Uh, you know. Uh, stainless steel construction and high mass design really make this a boiler that's going to last a long, long time. High temperature capability. It's very compact. And, and I didn't, one thing we maybe didn't even mention here is the fact that it's very, very quiet, nearly silent, silent operation. So 
uh, that's something that people, it's generally any of our condensing boilers with those matrix burners on them are quieter than a refrigerator. You, never, you don't even know it's running. Fast and easy to install and easy and, and simple to, to maintain. So, so those are uh, a lot of great benefits you can offer your customer with this boiler. And we really think it's, it's, it's the best choice for a lot of applications. Hello, this is uh, Rob Waters here and we're looking at the Wiesman Vito Cross 300 CU3A. This is installed in our showroom here in Waterloo, Ontario. And this is, uh, gives you a good idea of the size and scope of this, of this type of boiler. It's fairly tall. It's probably close to uh, five feet tall, uh, but a fairly small footprint. Depth and width um, are really going to be very similar to uh, a lot of the floor standing boilers that are on the market today. Uh, everything is piped from the back, so all your piping connections, vent connections, gas line connections all come in from the back of the unit. Uh, nothing from the sides or, or from the front. So if I remove the cover on the front, this gives you access to everything you need to get into from uh, control wiring and, and the burner and the combustion process. So uh, everything's laid out in an easily accessible manner, uh, full access to the burner, to the controls, and to the wiring. Easy to service, easy to access. So if we start at, 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 at the top here, our wiring, uh, harnesses between the control and and the power supply uh, come down and, and into the back. Uh, if we go down to the bottom here, you can see the power pump module is located at the bottom of the unit. This is where our main power supply comes in, and this is where any external components such as uh, circulating pumps, domestic water uh, pumps, recirc pumps are all connected into this bottom strip here, so they're all numbered. Uh, your 20 pump, your 21 pump, etc. Uh, your EA1 module is where a lot of the inputs come in. So if we have um, a 0 to 10 volt signals or any of the 143 uh, connections, they're all going to be connected in on this strip on the bottom here. The wiring connections down the bottom here, you have a, a multiple knockouts along the bottom here where we can put um, your cable ties for your power supply coming in. So all the wires come th through the bottom of the unit and up through into here. Uh, down in the bottom section down here, we have the condensate P-trap, which is located at the bottom of the flue gas collection box, and it feeds out condensate out the back of the unit. Uh, so the condensate comes down into the P-trap and then feeds out, out the back. And there's a screw-off connection point here and on the back, so it's very easy to take that whole assembly off, flush it out, clean it out, and, and put it back on again. The pipe you see here, this flexible pipe, is the combustion air inlet, and it's coming in from the back, and it flows all the way up into to the burner. Uh, as you get close to the burner, it transitions to a hard plastic pipe, uh, which feeds the combustion air in. And on that hard plastic pipe, there's a little T-assembly here, which is for uh, it's a, little, a little flapper assembly. And what this does is provides a little relief uh, from back pressure when the burner first fires. You're not ever going to get any combustion products coming out of here because it's only to sort of compensate for the difference in temperature and pressure you get in the, in the combustion air pipe, and uh, it'll, it sometimes will, won't even activate. It's just a, a, a gonna happen only at, and when the burner starts up. Because once the burner's running, all the air's running this way, and it's not gonna be an issue with, with any back pressure. Uh, the burner itself is mounted to the combustion chamber door, so it's a, a cast aluminum door held in place with four bolts, and uh, that whole door can come off and be, 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 uh, makes the, uh, gives you access to the combustion chamber for service. So located on the side here, you have uh, two brackets which hold the burner in place. So when you remove that burner from the door, 
uh, are from the combustion chamber, it will hang on those brackets and give you access for service. So from there, I can access the uh, uh, all of the components, both sides of the burner side and the and and the fan side here. Uh, coming in from the top here, we have our gas line connection that goes right through the back and extends out the back. So you you connect your pipe or your burn, your gas connection to the back of the boiler and then this is an internal pipe which brings now through a flexible gas line into the gas valve. So the gas valve is located uh, bolted to the side of the fan assembly and then you have your variable speed fan located over here. So very similar kind of componentry as you'll see in a, in a Vitoden series boiler. Uh, ignition transformer. Uh, provides to your, your power to your spark electrodes and then down here tucked in behind is the uh, is where your ionization electrode is located. Both of those have quick connect, everything has quick connect plugs so it's easy to take apart and access so if we need to take things apart again they're all number coded quick connect plugs on or in pretty much all the components of, of this unit. So when you're pulling things apart it's just a matter of, of matching up the quick connect plugs and so makes it simple and easy to service. Um, located up uh, above the, the combustion chamber door is the sensor well, uh, which is an immersion sensor well, to, uh, which goes right into the water uh, jacket of the boiler and that gives uh, where, where our, our temperature sensor for the boiler high limit is located. So that's pretty much it for the, the main components on, on, the on the front of the boiler. And uh, we'll take a look at now at the at the control system on this boiler. So, the this is the Vitotronic 200 series control, and uh, it's this, a little different cabinet than we've seen on some other V-spin boilers. It has a, a, a flip top arrangement, so it gives you access to the programming unit. And then, if I lift up this little front hatch here, I have access to my power supply my reset button and my status lights. So there's two status lights on here. There's a green power light and a red fault light. So when that cover's closed, these little indicators on the left hand side here are illuminated uh, so the user can, with a quick glance, can see if there's a fault or if there's power on the unit. The programming unit itself is the same interface as our Vitoden series of boilers. Uh, the HO1B series interface and it's got the uh, menu driven control system where I can get into different settings uh, for heating, uh, you know, uh, programming uh, things like room set point temperatures and heating curves are all done through here. So uh, nothing different there than we've seen in the past on, on, other, on other versions. So that's it. That's the uh, quick overview on the Vito Crossel 300 CU3A series floor mounted high mass gas fired condensing boiler. Thank you. Just to wrap things up here before we finish up, there is a promotion going on in, in Canada right now. Any CU3A boiler that's, that's purchased before the end of this year is eligible to, for the contractor to be entered into this contest. And there's three great prizes being given away, the largest being an Alaska cruise. And there's an Apple Watch and a local getaway as well. So if you have installed a CU3 or your customers are thinking about installing this, if you're a distributor, make your customers aware of this because uh, it's a great prize. And, and there's a, it's going to be very, very good odds because there's not a huge volume of, of boilers being sold. So, you know, the odds are much better than than buying a 649 ticket, I can tell you that. Just to wrap up here, you can get more information from our website. Certainly you can contact your Wiesman rep or you can attend more training. So there's lots of ways you can learn more from us. Our website has all, of course, the downloads for, and the pro login section for all the manuals. You can go to our the academy section of our website to see this full schedule of, of training seminars, but also webinar archive section and video section where you can download and watch videos of previous webinars, including this one and training videos that we have available. So look for that. Signing off uh, from Waterloo here. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate you uh, spending your time to learn about this uh, great innovative new product and we hope you give it a try. 
And uh, if you have any other questions, give myself, Rob Waters, or Mark Norris, our, our other Vsman Academy instructor, give us a call. We can help you out or contact your sales rep, and, um, and we can answer your questions. So, again, thanks for joining us, and, and have a great day.